Well, uh, yesterday I was watching one of Russian's channels in, um, in a hotel, and there was an interview with a Russian woman writer. And she said something. I didn't see the whole interview. I saw only part of it. And it was in the middle of something. But she said one sentence that actually she is quite convinced that art divides people, that art does not unite people, and is not a task of art to unite people, but rather to divide them. Because someone understands, someone don't, someone likes, someone don't, and so on. And it, it was, for me, it was a, a real and new thought, even though it made sense uh, how she s said it. Because uh, I work in art promotion center in Finland. We deal mainly with, with uh, professional artists or projects made by professional artists. And um, especially uh, art that needs a lot of people to be, to be done, uh, rather would unite those people who are in the middle of it. But this, this idea uh, awoke a lot of questions in my head. And this uh, topic of this panel discussion is dealing with popular art and uh, popular culture. I'm sorry, pardon me. Uh, so uh, I, you have to ask yourself, what is culture? Which is an, uh, on really a huge discussion. What, what, what do you understand as a concept of culture? Are we agree on what culture is? What we think what culture is? What part in it is art? and what kind of art we are talking about. And then another thing is popular to whom? What, when we say popular culture or popular art, what do we mean by that? So uh, because we don't have much time, I would give a uh, word to you. But that's, that questions that I, I left yesterday with and, and uh, think would be interesting to hear your opinion on that. Uh -huh. Uh, about this, um, what you said about art being divi uh, divisive, like uh, dividing people, uh, I think it's true, but it's, it's, it's the same, I think, in every field. So um, it's important to find these kind of practices and these kind of uh, ideas uh, that uh, uh, also uh, bring together people that kind of help to overcome these divisions. Uh, and it's the same, actually. Art is no different, I think, from, let's say, when you talk about in politics that you need to, um, I don't know, have more uh, women on boards uh, of uh, companies or something like that. I think it's the same thing that you have to look out for as an artist. You have to realize, that, okay, I'm, I am now living in this country. Uh, you know, we have this cultural minority. Uh, how can I engage these people uh, in my projects and and kind of you know mainstream uh, this idea of it's it's okay to to do things together because uh, I think you're right I think art has this potential of being you know we have very nationalistic art we can have uh, um, and 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 art was was one of the the reasons that nations I think uh, uh, began at first place like it's something to to unite a group of people against. Uh, the other group of people. So I think our responsibility now is to, to find these uh, practices, not just in the field of arts, but also in you know, academia, in uh, uh, politics and so on, uh, to, to change this, to make, make it normal uh, for, um, uh, for uh, all kinds of, of people, of all, all, from all minorities, from, from groups, uh, to be involved. So I, I think art is no different uh, in that sense from, from other fields. Yeah, I think I, I agree with the, what's been said. Arts and popular culture is like sport. It can divide people, but it can also unite people. It's up to who practices in one or in another direction. So I think nobody of us wanted to say that, you know, we are here with a, a magical solution to all the problems of, of humanity, but at least, you know, uh, my work in with second and third generation immigrants in, in different cities shows that sometimes it's much easier to use what they themselves call, well, don't, they don't use the words art of culture, but they talk about music, they talk about hip-hop, they talk about the various disciplines in hip-hop, and to start from there, from how they define what they are doing, and to try to see what resource they can gather around these activities. So, um, and, and I do think it is promising, but at the same time, there are constraints and difficulties. You know, I've shown you one picture of Brussels, but I could have shown you another picture about uh, uh, very, 
I would say, racist Muslim <laughs> hip-hop that also exists in, in Brussels that is used to try to show that the Belgian society is bad, that we should fight against the West, etc., etc. It also exists. But my, my intention is more to work on, on the more positive aspects with them, and that's very important. And what I see is music as something probably it's it's more i don't know probably you will agree or disagree it touches everybody uh, there there's no civilization or culture on earth that has no music in one form or in another and even neuroscience has shown that when there is music something happens in our brains and we react which is not necessarily the case with theater, or with painting, with literature, where you have first to learn a certain amount of codes. Uh, and sometimes it can be very easily uh, uh, studied. So th these are a few, a few reactions. But don't believe that we think that we here have, you know, let's make them do arts and all the problems of earth will be solved. That was not, I think, my, it was not my message and it was not our message, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, on, on that subject as well, I was thinking in Norway we have this uh, concept called Fellowship, which is a community of disagreement, which we talk about how culture can sort of be uh, uh, circling in different kinds of opinions within the field. But what we are mainly dealing with, at least with integration, is that people do not have access to this field at all. They do not have access to um, make their voices heard through their uh, experiences or cultural expressions. Um, and I think that to the allegory of, of football, uh, you can be rooting for Liverpool or Manchester, but you do not disagree that football is important. You, you agree that football is important. And this is the same thing with culture as well. If you get people to come onto the field and agree about the importance of culture, I think much is done. You do not need, necessarily need to agree on the culture expression itself or what is said. Hmm. Do I have anything else to say after after this? Well, well um, about art, let's talk about, let's define it as publicly displayed forms of creative expression. Um, as understood as, as that, I think, is it as Marco, if I remember correctly, already said, it, it's not either or question whether it unites or divides. It, it always does both. It, it unites and divides, and it all also also should do so. If publicly, let's say the public authorities would try to produce, make the society produce that kind of art that only would unite, I think that would be, well, that's something we would call totalitarianism. But um, I'm, I'm very worried about societies, about the future of our societies. I do not mind if at some point in the history of mankind we would organize our social life and political life in some other way than what we are doing now, but the, the, the way of, of thinking about states, geographically defined states, is the, the main thing how to organize democracy, how to distribute uh, uh, welfare uh, uh, and, and how to, to, to promote equality and, and so on. And at this point, we are really at risk of losing some of the main components of what makes a society, and that is a sufficient sense of unity. There is a certain degree of feeling together that is needed for a society to function. And we need some vehicles, some instruments to enhance the unity within the diversity that we have now in, in our societies. And I think that arts and culture in all these different forms, they do much in order to, to, to improve the situation and to meet the challenges that we have. But at the moment, I'm, I think that much of what is done is too fragmented, too short-lived, too, too badly financed. Quick question from the internet. It's a one-word answer for each of you. What country would you suggest has the best practice of implementing cultural diversity policy? Only one country? Just, just one country. 
Um, well, the first that comes to mind would be Canada, but that's uh, only because they've actually adopted multiculturalism as a main thing of their national state as a whole. In implementing cultural activities, I don't know. <laughs> I will have to think a few minutes. I think from an artistic perspective, I would actually say uh, uh, like Belgium, Holland, that area, because they have been quite successful in uh, organizing a lot of um, these kind of uh, big theater festivals that uh, deal with these issues. And uh, um, they ha as the society, societies themselves are there uh, divided, or at least have different uh, um, nationalities there, I think they are kind of uh, used to uh, dealing with these prob uh, problems for a long time in the arts fields. So uh, just a, a guess. Uh, I will reply with the anti-model. The anti-model for me is France. It's the worst you can do. <laughs> Theoretically speaking, I would say none, because none, none, no, no country is doing that much as they could do and should do. Canada is probably the country where, where there have been most uh, uh, achievements. What comes to Europe, the Netherlands would have been a good candidate in the mid until the mid 1990s, and after that, definitely not. I, uh, um, I think that the United Kingdom still the, the is, is a, if the first for the first prize in Europe would would go there if one would ask me at the moment. Um, thank you. Uh, there was uh, something said which, which awake a reaction in myself because you said that football is a big thing, a significant thing, professional sport is a significant thing. Uh, personally, I don't care at all about <laughs> sports. Okay. And there is normally a question when you get Finnish citizenship in Finland, people would ask you, so if Russian ice hockey plays against Finnish ice hockey, who you will be with? And that makes people completely confused when I honestly say I don't care. It's really, I don't care. And, uh, <laughs> that, yeah. and that, that makes me think about we assume certain things important and big only because they have, they, uh, have a mass effect on people. Um, which is, of course, it comes also to the Western democracy. Uh, and uh, I would like to stop with words of Churchill, who said that... Uh, Democracy is probably the best oh, existing uh, uh, possibility to run a state and society, but it has one weak point. Every idiot gets the vote. <laughs> so I'm a little bit afraid of mass, uh, and in that sense, that was interesting what you said about what is popular culture, what is popular art, and what is art and culture without the word popular, because popular comes from people, so from a mass. Okay, you took my allegory a little far, but what I wanted to say was that uh, art could provide a field where you could express some emotions or some meanings through different um, types of arts, be it dance, music, or, or so on. And my allegory was just that if you are interested in sports, you express your identity or your feelings through that by cheering at one team, whereas another person would cheer for another team. But you would be equally uh, in agreement that sports is important. But if you do hip hop or dance, or you could come together over what you think is important, but you would also be in agreement with people who do other types of art that are it important even though you don't do that type of art. I think that was my <laughs> point. I mean, I play volleyball three <laughs> times a week myself, <laughs> yeah. but I don't care to watch it mm. because I'm just, yeah. Let's have a round of applause, please, for our panel. <laughs> Thank you.